Hey guys, Matt DeCrenna here from beyondgrappling.com. Uh, sorry, I'm just at home. It's the nicest weather outside. So anyway, I thought I'd do a video uh, for you on the top five things I learned at this year's Olympics because uh, the Olympics just finished up and I learned a ton of stuff. So first thing I thought, I, I, I learned grip fighting. If you're a competitor, you need to know how to grip fight. Grip fighting is everything. So there is so many fights were won and lost on the gripping exchanges. So if you're a competitor and you don't know how to grip fight, I suggest you grab Grip Like a World Champion by Jimmy Pedro. You can grab Grip to Win by Riley Ferguson. I've got a grip fighting DVD. It's like 10 bucks, gripfightbasics.com. But you've got to learn how to grip fight. Grip fight against a lefty, a righty, a top gripper, a double lapella, and guys that fight double sleeve. So that's the first one I learned was a ton of grip fighting. To the point it was sometimes boring, but I really like watching matches like uh, the Russian Pulaev versus Bouchard, the Canadian. The, the Russian didn't know what to do with the Canadian's grips. He was completely frustrated, and the Canadian got the win just through really, really good grip fighting. So definitely get the grip fighting. And that was the first one. The next one, I wrote them down. Soda to Surikomagoshi was everywhere. And this kind of links to the grip fighting because when people grip fight, they, they grip break now with this, this one-handed, they kind of grab their own lapel and they punch. Uh, but you can disguise it easily with a sode. So these guys are faking to grip break and then they're dropping in for a double sleeve sode or a lapel and sleeve sode. So, um, and sode, I find it actually really hard to do. It's a really hard throw. Um, but uh, anyway, start working it because even if you go for a sode and you miss it, you've broken their grip. So you either break their grip and you get a score and a good attack in, or you break their grip. So either way, it's um, I thought I really, really liked it at this year's Olympics. Next one, Newaza transitions. There was tons of Newaza transitions this year. Now, Newaza, there's two aspects of Newaza. Okay, there's two. The first is I do a throw and we instantly go into Newaza. Actually, there's three. I do a throw and we instantly end up in Newaza. You need to learn how to do a transition from that. Additionally, uh, a guy does a drop sinagi and you need to know how to transition from that. And the other transition is where when that you're completely separated. So this guy does a drop sinagi and you break grips and now he's on his stomach or on turtle and then you engage. So you need to know how to uh, do a newaza transition from uh, either before or after a technique or when there's a break and there's no grips and then you attack on the ground. Um, sorry, there's some chainsawing outside. Uh, a tree fell on a house, so uh, no one got injured. But anyway, they're just cutting the tree in half to get it off the roof. So uh, don't mind that one. The next one was game plans. Game planning is is vital if you're a competitor. Every single match, a guy's had game plans. I mean, I watched the Bouchard versus Pulaev, the Russian. Game plan from start to finish. The Chinese guy that fought Iliadis, game plan from start to finish on every match. So I really encourage you to have a game plan against every single person that you're fighting. You need to know if they're left or right-handed, how tall they are, what throws they do, what newaza transitions they do, what sort of cardio they have. When do they throw people? Do they throw people? Do they win most of their matches in the first minute? Or do they win most of their matches in the last minute? Do they win by penalties? you got to know all this stuff going into a match. And at the Olympics, I saw this game plans time and time again. The Portuguese guy versus Zantaraya in 66s had a game plan and shut down Zantaraya completely. Um, so game plans win matches, not more Randori. Uh, lastly, playing for penalties. This three aspects to this, playing for penalties. Judo these days, you need to get a score. Whoever scores first will win. Now, guys kind of score first and then dog the match and just defend and defend and rack up penalties and win the match. So that's one way you can win. So uh, on the flip side of that, one, you need to learn how to, you need to score first because at once a guy gets a score and they start racking up penalties, the sh three shitos come pretty quickly, but the four shito where they get disqualified comes very, very slowly. You know, you might get, you know, this penalty takes 20 seconds, this one takes 30, the next one takes 40. But that last penalty, the, the Hansakomaki penalty, that can go anywhere from a minute to two minutes. The referees don't like giving it. So you need to learn how to, one, how to be able to survive by racking up penalties. And you also need to learn how to throw a guy that's racking up penalties. If, if someone's beating you by Yuko, 
and and all they're doing is trying to dog the match. They're not trying to throw you. They're not even fighting. It's so annoying to watch, uh, but guys do it well. Uh, you need to learn how to throw guys that are 100% defensive, and you need to learn what throws to do. If someone's being 100% defensive, don't do shimigash, because now like you're 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 allowing them to do nawaza and run out the time that sort of stuff. So playing for penalties is massive. You got to learn how to play for penalties. You got to learn how to uh, throw someone that's playing for penalties. So to do that, at, it's not just about throwing people for rip on in training. It's about saying, "Hey, you're winning by Wazari, and I've got two minutes to throw you for a Wazari or for a nip on." So not just do Randori and play judo, but have specific Randori scenarios. Like you're winning by Yuko uh, and that sort of stuff. So uh, anyway, they're the five things I guess I learned at this year's Olympics. Obviously, I learned a ton more. Game planning, grip fighting, there was a transitions, and you've got to be able to throw for rip on. You know, you've got to be able to have believable attacks and you've got to have a game plan. So, there, I guess, the top five things that I learned, relearned, and I guess, re, um, I don't know, just re watching the Olympics and going, yeah, that's right, yeah, these are all. And so day was a big one, uh, and that sort of stuff. So, anyway, that's what I learned. I really hope you enjoy watching the Olympics. I know I did. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching my videos. If you like them, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and I'll try to upload more and more whenever I can. I'm a busy guy. You know, I've got my own club, got my own kid and that sort of stuff. So, But once again, just thank you so much for subscribing to my channel, for watching, for commenting on my videos. I really, really appreciate it. So have a great week and we'll see you later on.